What's up guys, you're watching Bob's Decline, Lyman Blogger. We've got a gorgeous day outside today. The birds are chirping, the transformers humming. We're gonna be doing things a little bit different here today. I get quite a few questions on my YouTube channel, on Facebook, Instagram. I try my best to answer everybody's question to the best of my knowledge. So today I got an instant message from Jason and his question was, how does the system know there is an issue and know when to open the cutout fuse? And what causes a transformer to blow instead of the cutout fuse? So Jason, what I'm gonna to do to answer your question, I'm actually going to make a video and we're gonna cover the system from the power transformer right through to the house. That way I can better explain how the system isolates a fault, why a cutout blows, why a transformer might blow instead of a cutout. All right, so that question's from Jason, guys, and his YouTube channel is Liftmaster1280. Looks like he might specialize in garage doors. There's quite a few videos on his channel all to do with garage doors. So that's Jason, guys, from Liftmaster1280. Check it out. Thanks for the question, so big shout out to that. Let's get started. So this is our power transformer. It's just a tiny little guy feeding a rural area. Most of them are much bigger than this. We have 69,000 volts coming in here and 12,470 coming out. Going through here, we have our first protection device. Uh, we call it an interruptor. So the interruptor basically has a setting. It's got some relays in it. If the current exceeds the setting, it will trip to shut off power. You might have a small branch fall down on the system and the arc flash clears the branch, it falls to the ground, there's no longer a fault in the lines, this interruptor will actually automatically turn the power back on. If it still detects a fault, it will do it up to a total of three times, depending on the settings for your particular company or your area. We can also take what is called a hold off, and basically that sets the interruptor to a one trip setting. Once that power trips out, it will not come back on. Much the same as if there's a major fault, phase line on the ground, it's drawn two, 3,000 amps, that interruptor will not close back in in those circumstances. Right, so we're gonna take a step back to our power transformer again for a second. There's a fault in the power transformer itself. What we have in that case are these high tension fuses. You can see there's a set of switches up top and below that set of switches are those orange fuse barrels. So if there is a fault in this power transformer, those puppies are gonna blow, they're violent, they're loud, it's not something that happens very often. The first piece of equipment on our line after the oil reclosure or the interruptor is a set of voltage regulators. Sometimes these things are built directly into the power transformer itself. So what these units do is they monitor the voltage through a control panel and again, a bunch of relays and equipment here there's a control panel for each unit so as the load increases at say dinner time when everyone turns their oven on puts a huge draw on the line that draw brings the voltage down that voltage regulator will then tap up we call it there's actually a mechanical tap that slides along the windings to adjust the ratio which increases the voltage so that the voltage delivered to our customers houses is at a stable level that is set somewhere around 120 volts phase to ground. And of course, as the load comes off the line, that voltage is gonna to start to skyrocket up very quickly. Again, these units will detect that. That mechanical device will slide across the coils. It will increase the ratio in order to reduce the voltage. This helps keep the voltage supplied to our customers between a set parameter. An acceptable voltage can generally fluctuate plus or minus 5%. We tend to keep the voltage on the higher scale close to the substation. This has got to travel a long way. And as it travels through the line, there is a voltage drop. You will probably see another set of these voltage regulators, maybe 10, 20 kilometers down the road. You get your voltage here. As it's traveling to the customer, that voltage level is going down. Especially in rural areas, we will have some voltage regulators out in line to boost that back up as it decreases. All right, so, so far we've got our power transformer. We've got our interruptor, which could also be a reclosing device, uh, an oil reclosure, vacuum recloser, a breaker. They all cover the same purpose. Our next piece of equipment is the voltage regulator. Let's go take a drive down the line and see what's next. 
All right, guys, so our next major piece of equipment on the distribution feeder is a set of switches. So the doors in these load brake cutouts are actually solid copper doors. Their specs are that they are rated for 300 amps. Now that's 300 amps under normal system usage. If there's a fault down the line for, let's say, even 2,000, 3,000 amps, chances are it's not gonna affect those doors at all. It's gonna bypass right through them, back to the interruptor and trip power back at the substation. We can then use these as an isolation point. We can open those doors and take work permit from this location back to the fault. That way we don't interrupt power to the customers that are on the source side of this pole. So we're on the same line here and just ahead you will see a three phase sideline. Again, with a set of cutouts. Now looking in our system, these cutouts are fused at 40 amps. Let's say there's a problem, a tree falls across the three phases here. It's gonna blow these fuses fairly quickly. So it's not unusual if there's a fault in the line that blows a set of cutouts on a sideline for the interruptor or the overclosure to trip out. That cutout will blow, the interruptor will turn power back on up to the cutout that blew and remain in the closed position. That way the power is only interrupted to a minimal amount of customers. So we're just down the line a little further at our next major piece of equipment and this would be a set of capacitors. A capacitor bank we call it, there's one for each phase. Now these guys get a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna to try to give you the skinny in about 30 seconds here. Let's say power runs on the lines at a number, 100%. Now by the time it gets into your home, it's at another number, 97%. So that 3% is a loss in efficiency of the power that we deliver. You are not built for that 3%. You are built for exactly the power you use at your home. But we as a company still have to supply that 100% level. So that 3% is actually a loss. We want the power factor to be as close to 100% as possible. So next in line, we've got another set of cutouts you see here on all three phases, except this time they are fused. They're fused with 100 amp fuses. So in the end, you end up with something like this. Now, keep in mind, the amperages are different depending on the setup you're in. Uh, the solid doors we've seen earlier were 300 amps. We also have 600 amp solid doors. There's, again, many different manufacturers. But for today, here's what we got. We've got our substation going up to a set of 300 amp solid cutouts, then down to our next sexualizing point would be 200 amps, 140 amps, etc., etc. If there's a fault here, let's say a bird gets into the lines across the two phases, it wants to blow this set of fuses. Now that bird is going to cause a fault current of, let's say, 900 amps. So how come that 900 amps doesn't trip the 140s, the 200s, back through to the sub and pop that OR out. Fuse can trip as fast as one half of a cycle. Now in one second, there are 60 cycles. When everything is working the way it should, within that half a cycle, that 140 amp fuse will pop a fraction of a second faster than that 200 amp fuse has a chance to pop. Sometimes the relays are sensitive enough that they will see the current all the way back at the sub. That's why we have that interruptor, I called it. Generally speaking, they are more sensitive than the fuses out on the line. That is sometimes why you're sitting at home, the lights go out, boom, they come right back on. That's from the reclosing device acting at the sub as it's supposed to. So just because your lights may be flickering a couple times, it doesn't mean there's something particularly wrong with your house or your street. It could be a fault miles away that's affecting the entire system. So how does a fuse know when to blow? Electricity causes heat. The easier the electricity can flow through something, the less heat there's gonna be. Our fuses are designed to be the weakest point by far within the system. So if the wire itself is say the size of my finger, the fuse is gonna be the size of a toothpick. It's designed so that if it detects the slightest amount of heat at all, it's gonna melt, it's spring loaded, it's gonna break apart that wire as quickly as possible. This is all stuff that they figured out a long time ago. Technology hasn't changed much.
a fairly analog setup. The bigger the fuse is rated for, the bigger the piece of wire inside, the more heat it's going to take to melt that fuse link. You coordinate these fuse links in the lines so that they get smaller and smaller so it takes less heat, i.e. less current, to trip them. When everything is coordinated properly, you have a system that is more reliable that's able to isolate faults according to where the current spikes are. Then why is it that sometimes a transformer blows up? Why doesn't the fuse blow? Generally speaking, when you hear someone say the transformer blew up, it didn't, it's just the fuse. When a fuse blows, it's loud. It can be pretty aggressive. And of course, when you see it, first thing that comes to the mind is the transformer just blew up. But let's take a look at a transformer because they most certainly do sometimes blow up. This is just a single phase transformer where you can see the high voltage lead taps on to the main phase. So the phases up top are 12,470 volts phase to phase. That would be approximately 7,200 volts phase to neutral or phase to ground. So it comes down into our cutout. So this particular transformer is a 25 kVA. So we have that cutout fused at six amps. Now right in behind the cutout, what you see is a lightning arrestor. The lightning arrestor is hooked up to the high voltage and has a direct electrical path to ground. However, there's a series of resistors in there high enough that it won't cause a short for the voltage that's supposed to be in the lines. If there's a lightning strike on the lines anywhere at all that's connected to that transformer, rather than blowing all of our equipment all to pieces, it will drain any excess voltage out through that lightning arrestor, sometimes even blowing the arrestor right apart. Now, if there's a fault in that transformer, what's supposed to happen is the fuse link within that cutout heats up, it melts, powers out, makes a real loud bang, some sparks go flying. Those transformers are actually filled with oil. You got your copper windings, you got some magnets, and you got some oil. The more load that's on a transformer, the more amperage that's flowing through it. The more amperage, the more heat. The oil that's in the transformer helps dissipate this heat from the windings through the oil to the outer side of a transformer. If the oil is contaminated, it's not gonna be insulated well enough to protect that high voltage from shorting out. It could be water within the oil. Sometimes little arcs that occur in the transformer, especially if it's a voltage regulator that has moving parts inside it, the arcing causes carbon. Windings burn up, same as an element does in your stove. It could simply even be just an overloaded transformer that's not drawing quite enough current to blow the fuse. It's just slowly heating up for days and days, maybe even months heating up until that pressure builds up to a point where the pressure release valve can no longer take it and that thing just blows apart. A lot of times when a transformer does go bad, you'll see black marks all around the pressure release valve as well as an open cutout. If that happens, most times it's still just gonna blow the cutout. You try to refuse it, close it back in, it's gonna blow that cutout again. The transformer itself probably won't blow up. But every once in a while when the conditions are just right or wrong, I should say, sometimes the transformer itself will actually blow up. It's very difficult to predict a transformer failing to the point where it actually blows up. It doesn't happen very often. If ever you arrive to a trouble call and somebody's power is flickering, you jump out of your truck and you hear, it sounds like popcorn inside the transformer, it's pinging and that means she's ready to blow. I wanna say open it up as quickly as possible, but even that might not be the safe thing to do. Just staring up at that cutout with a stick, trying to hook into that ring and blow it open, could be a good way to get hurt. If you have another means of killing power to that line, sometimes it's the best option. You go to the next set of switches back, open the line, power's out, you go back to the transformer that's failing, you clear it from the line. Clear it meaning open the cutout, take the tap off, that transformer is no longer tied to our system, energize the main line again, and away you go. Go change that transformer. Once a transformer is no good, we call it a blown transformer, but it doesn't mean the transformer actually blew up. All right guys, so these pieces of equipment that we went over today that are part of a basic power line distribution setup work together to accomplish four different tasks. That is one, to minimize the outages to our customers. When there's a fault in the line, we want it to affect as little people as possible. Two, to supply our customers with a steady voltage that doesn't fluctuate too much. We don't want that voltage going up too high or too low. The equipment that's on the lines is designed to maintain this at all times. Three, 
It is designed to protect the system. Any of this equipment that is on the lines is actually designed to protect our system from catastrophic failure when there is a fault. And lastly, and we just got a trouble call, so we're gonna check that out. Lines are too tight going to the house, awesome. We're gonna check that out in about 30 seconds. So lastly, we have our system that is to protect the public. When something goes bad and wires come down, we want that power to trip out as quickly as possible to keep everyone safe. All right guys, thanks again for checking out my channel. If you have any questions, don't be scared. Write them in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them. If it's a question that's outside of my expertise or outside of my experience, there's lots of guys that watch this channel that are very well educated that I'm sure would be glad to chime in. Other than that, check out my Being Alignment series where we follow along as I respond to actual trouble calls out on the lines. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you next time.